क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट थारिस्टा कम्युटेशन सर्किट so we all discussed about how we can switch on the thyristor or how we can allow the thyristor to conduct or in other words how we can trigger the thyristor but as you all know thyristor is a semi controlled device that means once you trigger the thyristor once it starts conducting you cannot stop it or it does not get stopped automatically so we need an external circuit to stop the thyristor once the thyristor starts conducting it does not get stopped automatically so an external circuit is needed to stop the thyristor from conducting the external circuit through which the thyristor conduction is stopped is called a commutation circuit and the entire principle is called the commutation of thyristor so friends let's talk about different types of commutations and how it gets carried away so friends as you all can see i have classified the thyristor commutation techniques into two parts one is called natural commutation number two is called force commutation so again the force commutation is classified into five parts which is class a which is called self or load commutation class b resonant pulse commutation class c complementary commutation class d impulse commutation class e external pulse commutation now friends let's talk about the natural commutation process so friends as you all can see this diagram over here so i have supplied an ac voltage across a thyristor and a load resistor let ig be the thyristor minimum gate current which is required to allow the thyristor to conduct the flow of electric current through this now let il be the load current and ig be the gate current now friends in a natural commutation principle what happens is that whenever the sine wave out of the ac supply is positive the thyristor is forward biased and once a triggering gate current is applied across the gate pulse the thyristor starts conducting but during the negative half cycle the thyristor gets reversed biased and is automatically stops conducting that is the reason this process is called natural commutation circuit so friends if we draw the wave form of the entire process so let's say this is the supply voltage vs is a function of time and this is the time so vs is a sine wave now friends let's draw the voltage across the load let vl be the voltage across the load now friends let's say this point is the conduction angle alpha alpha now the thyristor starts conducting when the conduction angle reaches that means the thyristor will start conducting at this point but at this point the thyristor will stop conducting because now it is reversed biased because of this negative half cycle again at this point it will again start conducting if i draw the voltage across the thyristor let v s c r be the voltage across the thyristor and the voltage waveform will look like this if i draw a small segment here with the blue marker now the thyristor or the voltage across the thyristor will be during the negative half cycle up to the point till it starts conducting so you can see the waveform across the thyristor so friend this is all about natural commutation now let's talk about what is forced commutation remember one thing natural commutation occurs naturally you do not need a external 
circuit for the natural commutation. But for the forced commutation, we need an external circuit. So friends, let's talk about class A or self or load commutation circuit. So here you can see, I have supplied a DC voltage and I've connected it with a thyristor in series with an inductor, which is L, and which is connected to a load and a capacitor and a battery. So in this circuit, friends, what happens is that whenever a positive DC supply is given to the thyristor terminal, the thyristor gets forward biased. And now the current, let's say, I not be the current across the circuit, it start flowing through the circuit if a triggering current signal, which is IG, is given across the grate terminal through a triggering voltage or a gate voltage VG. Now, as the current already started conducting, what happens is that it will flow through the inductor and the capacitor will get charged. Now, whenever the capacitor gets fully charged and it starts discharging, obviously, the terminal across the capacitor while it was charging was positive and negative, positive on the first plate and negative on the second place. But when the capacitor starts discharging, the terminal just reverses and it becomes negative on the first plate and the positive on the second plate. But as inductor does not allow a sudden change of electric current, what it will do is it will make the thyristor reversed biased and the thyristor will stop conducting. So friend, this is called self or load commutation. So we are using an L and C reactance just to stop the conducting principle of a thyristor, which is already conducting in a circuit. So friends, this happens because of the capacitor charging and discharging and the inductor action. So friends, let's talk about class B commutation circuit or which is called resonant pulse commutation circuit. So friends, if you all can see this diagram over here. So I've drawn a simple circuit diagram. Let's see, this is the V, which is a DC supply, is connected to a thyristor, an inductor, and a CL load. So what happens here is, L and C here creates a resonating or oscillating circuit, which consequence a sine wave formation here. Because of the sine wave, the thyristor conducts during the positive half cycle and during the negative half cycle, the thyristor stops conducting. So, for example, during when the DC voltage is being supplied across the thyristor, the thyristor is forward biased and whenever we supply a gate voltage, it gets triggered and it starts conducting. But because of the RC oscillating or RC resonating or LC resonating circuit, the thyristor stops conducting during the negative half cycle and because of the formation of the sine wave. Now friends, let's talk about the complementary commutation circuit. So if you all can see this circuit diagram, this is called a class C or a complementary commutation circuit. So in this diagram, I have used two thyristors with two gate currents, IG1 and IG2 respectively, a capacitor and two resistances to limit the circuit current or let's say this is just the resistor connected as a load. Now, whenever there is a DC supply and let's say P1 is triggered with a gate pulse given to the gate terminal. Let IG1 be the gate current. Now, when P1 is triggered, so friends, the current start flowing in this loop of the circuit. Now, as the thyristor T1 is already conducting and as the current is already flowing through this circuit, that means through R1 and R2, the capacitor C starts charging. Now, Whenever we trigger the second thyristor during this operation, P2, what happens is that this capacitor starts discharging. 
विच कॉन्सिक्वेंस थाइरिस्टी वन टू गेट रिवर्स बायस्ड एंड थाइरिस्टी टू टू गेट फॉरवर्ड बायस्ड दैट मीन्स वेन एवर द थाइरिस्टी वन इज ऑलरेडी कंडक्टिंग एंड इफ वी गिव सम गेट पल्स टू द थाइरिस्टी टू बिकॉज ऑफ द कैपेसिटेंस चार्जिंग एंड डिस्चार्जिंग फॉर दिस स्पेसिफिक ऑपरेशन बिकॉज द कैपेसिटेंट डिस्चार्जेस थाइरिस्टी टू स्टार्ट कंडक्टिंग एंड ड्यूरिंग डिस्चार्जिंग द terminal of the capacitance alters so because of this reason thyristor t1 gets reversed bias and stops conducting in the same manner whenever thyristor t2 is conducting because we already gave a gate pulse to the thyristor t2 and we start making the thyristor t1 conductive by giving again a gate pulse ig1 the thyristor t1 Thyristor T2 will stop conducting and T1 will start conducting and this process will continue. That means in a complementary commutation circuit, one thyristor is being stopped from conducting by allowing a different thyristor through a capacitance conducting and vice versa. Now friends, let's talk about an impulse commutation circuit. So friends, as you all can see, an impulse commutation circuit is also called a class D commutation circuit. So the circuit is represented by this. So what I have done here is, I've taken a DC supply, I've used a capacitor, again two thyristor, T1 and T2, but this time I have involved a diode, an inductor with a load in the circuit. Now friends, again, whenever thyristor T1 is triggered, because it is already forward biased, it will start conducting and meanwhile C will be getting charged or the capacitance will be getting charged. Now, if I try to trigger thyristor T2, meanwhile the thyristor T1 is already conducting, when the thyristor T2 is, is triggered with an external gate pulse, the capacitor starts discharging, which will make the thyristor T1 reversed by it and it will stop the thyristor T1 from conducting electricity. So in the same way, whenever thyristor T2 is already conducting and we trigger thyristor T1 because of the discharging action of the capacitor, T2 will stop conducting and T1 will start conducting. So this will be kind of creating an resonating circuit which will allow only one thyristor to conduct at one time if the other thyristor is switched on or triggered with an external gate pulse because of the capacitance action the first thyristor will stop conducting so this is how we stop a thyristor from conducting electricity by an external electric circuit now friends let's talk about class e and the last type of commutation circuit so class E commutation circuit is also called as external pulse commutation circuit. So friends, you all can see I've used a capacitor, a thyristor, and the thyristor is connected to the primary or the secondary. Here, let's say secondary coil of a transformer in series with a load, and the capacitor is connected in parallel with the thyristor. Now, if I give a pulse using a pulse generator to the primary coil of a transformer, let's say T be the transformer. So what I have done here is, I have given a pulse to the transformer and I'm allowing the same pulse through the secondary circuit which is connected to one end of the thyristor and to the load. Now in this case, friends, what happens is that we can always change the thyristor voltage. We can always make a thyristor forward biased and reversed biased by increasing the pulse or increasing the frequency of the pulse so that we can change the secondary transformer voltage and we can make the thyristor forward biased and reversed biased. And during the reversed bias condition, the thyristor will stop conducting and during the forward biased condition if the thyristor is triggered with an external gate pulse it will start conducting so friends this is all about the thyristor commutation circuit which means how we can stop the thyristor from conducting electricity thank you so much friends for watching this video please subscribe to ekeda thank you so much